None of these methods involve turning a long skinny object inside out. If you haven't thought about making your own belts before, maybe this video will change your mind. Hey everyone, welcome back to my sewing and DIY channel. In this video today, I'll be showing you two different methods of making your own fabric belts. The first method, which I will be referring to as the modern method for the purpose of this video, uses things that you can find in craft stores these days, fabric, interfacing, and a pre-made belt buckle. The second method, which I'll be calling the vintage method, uses this vintage belt and buckle kit that I found in a thrift store and a belt making technique that I learned from this singer sewing book from the 1960s, which is titled, believe it or not, how to make belts. This method is so amazing that by the time I figured it out, I felt like my life was changed forever. And what's even better, none of these methods involve turning a long skinny object inside out. Personally, I think a coordinated belt is like the cherry on top of a handmade outfit. If you're already making your own outfits, then why are you stopping at making your own belts? Before I bore you with all the details about how I feel about belts, let's make some magic. For both the modern and vintage methods of making belts, we will need the measurement of our natural waistline. Do this over clothes that you think you'll be wearing your belt most frequently with, and for obvious reasons, don't do it over a thick jacket. For my modern belt, I'm using this pre-made belt buckle that's shaped like a letter D with a single vertical bar and a single pin. I'm also using this black fabric that I have in my stash and some lightweight fusible interfacing. So the black fabric that I'm using for this belt is a medium weight canvas and it already has quite a bit of structure and stiffness to it. So for the fusible interfacing, I am using a more lightweight interfacing. If you're using a more lightweight fabric like cotton poplin, then you want to use a heavier weight interfacing like a medium weight interfacing that is meant for, you know, like the collars of shirts. Really the idea is to have a combination of the fabric and and the fusible interfacing to get an end product with the stiffness that you want. If in doubt, always do a test patch. So to make a modern belt like this one, you need the measurement of your waist circumference and the width of the belt buckle. And by that, I mean the length of this vertical bar, which in my case is 1.25 inches. To make one modern belt, I cut two rectangular pieces out using my fabric. The length of this rectangle is the waist circumference plus six inches for overlap. And the width of this rectangle is the length of the belt buckle plus three quarter inches for seam allowance. For my fusible interfacing, I cut two pieces of rectangles. The length of each rectangle is the waist circumference plus six inches for the same overlap. And the width of the rectangle is simply the width of the buckle, which in my case is 1.25 inches. And here are all the pieces that I cut to make one modern belt. After cutting all the pieces to make the modern belt, start by applying the interfacing to the wrong side of the fabric pieces. Make sure that the interfacing sits right in the middle of the rectangle and avoid having the interfacing stuck to the seam allowance of the fabric pieces. Next, fold the seam allowance to the wrong side of the fabric and baste it in place using the longest stitch length of your machine. Do this for all four long edges of your two fabric belt pieces. If you want to be more precise with your sewing, the way to do it is to fold and press the seam allowance with an iron before sending it to the machine. But there's an easy way of doing it and this is the trick. No pins, no ruler, no pressing. Here is how it's done. Line the folded edge of the rectangle to the 3-8 line on your machine. Check that the raw edge of the seam allowance sits right in the middle of the presser foot. When these two points are aligned, you'll know that you have exactly 3 8 inch of the seam allowance folded. Then how do you base it in place since the seam allowance doesn't sit in the middle of the presser foot? Shift your needle to the right and voila! The needle and thread will be able to catch the seam allowance. Leave about 2-3 to three inches worth of seam allowance unstitched for one end of 
each fabric belt pieces. This end will be the pointed end of the belt. We're leaving part of the seam allowance unstitched so that we can sew and shape the pointed end more easily later. Take these ends of the belt, unfold the seam allowance, and place the belt pieces right sides together. Stitch the two belt pieces right sides together with the same 3 8 inch seam allowance. Start from the short end of the belt and end about 2 inches from the short end. Don't forget to also backstitch so the stitches won't unravel easily when we turn the pointed end inside out later. Next, draw your desired shape of the end of the belt. I drew a pointed end of the belt by first drawing a horizontal midline on the belt and then marking two more vertical lines about half an inch from the short raw edge of the fabric belt. And finally, I drew a triangle to make the pointed end of the belt using the vertical lines and the midline as a guide. Now stitch along the seam allowance and the pointed outline of the belt. Yes, we will be stitching over the same stitches from the previous step. I also want to highlight that part of the trick to getting a nice pointed end is to actually have horizontal stitches, just a couple of horizontal stitches going across the pointed tip rather than pivoting the stitches at the point when sewing. The other part of the trick to getting a beautiful tip is to trim the fabric to about 1 8 of an inch from the stitches. After trimming the excess fabric, turn the end of the belt inside out and you should have a perfect pointed tip to your fabric belt. Next, pin the fabric belt pieces wrong sides together and stitch them together by sewing about 1 8 to 1 quarter inch from the edges. Remove the basting stitches and finish the straight, raw end of the belt with small zigzag stitches. The belt is almost complete and now we need to start making eyelets on the belt. First, we need to make an eyelet where the pin of the buckle goes through. Using a sharp pointed tool like a sewing awl, punch a hole in the middle of the width of the belt, about half an inch from the straight end of the belt. Right, but now I just need to interrupt this tutorial with a little confession. So, I made an error when adding numbers up at the start of this project. I said to add 6 inches to waist measurement, which is correct, but I didn't add the numbers up correctly for myself. So instead of cutting 31.5 inches, I only cut 31 inches worth of interfacing and fabric for the belt. So to make sure that I still had the final measurement of the belt that I wanted, I saved a little bit of length where the belt was supposed to loop around and overlap uh, where the buckle is. The key takeaway is that if I had the length cut right, I would be making this hole one inch from the straight edge rather than half an inch. This hole should be big enough for the pin of the buckle to go through. For my modern belt, I decided to hand finish the eyelets, which I guess is not a super modern way of finishing the eyelets. Um, it's really hard for me to explain how to do this without making it a standalone tutorial on its own. So I'm just going to leave you with this illustration, this video, and a little bit of background music. To attach the belt to the buckle, loop the straight end of the belt around the vertical bar and insert the pin through the eyelet. The straight end of the belt should be on the same side as the back of the buckle. Sew the straight end of the belt to the belt body either by hand or with your sewing machine. And like I mentioned, I had to do this by hand. Next, we will be making eyelets in the body of the belt. Start by making the first eyelet on the belt that will make the belt fit your waist exactly. To do this, measure the length of your waist circumference from this edge of the buckle. Make that first hole, then make two more holes, one inch to the left and right of the first hole. 
If you find that you have a bigger fluctuations in waist circumference throughout the day, then feel free to make more eyelids as needed. I embroidered the edge of the eyelids just like before and this is how it looks on the right side and this is how it looks on the wrong side. For my vintage belt, I'm using this Dritz Vintage Belt and Buckle Kit from the 1960s and the same green fabric that I used to make my half circle skirt, my pinafore dress and the bias tape of my holiday dress. The packaging of the kit actually includes some instructions but it's just three overly simplified steps which is why I like to have a period appropriate sewing book like this one in my personal sewing library. And if you don't have a sewing book like this one, you have me! Hey! <laughs> this belt kit contains five eyelets, the buckle pin, and this adhesive template, the buckle piece, and the white belting material. To make a belt using belting material like the one from this vintage kit, you need the measurement of your waist and the width of the belting. The belting included in my kit is 1 inch wide. To make one belt, cut one rectangle with your choice of fabric. The length of this rectangle should be the length of your waist plus 6.5 inches. The width of this rectangle should be the width of your belting multiplied by 2 plus 1 inch. Then trim your belting material so that the length of the belting is your waist plus 6 inches. Before cutting your belting, make sure that you press and flatten the belting with an iron. After trimming the belting, cut and shape the tip of the belting. I did this using the same method that I used for my modern belt. Now I want to talk about the wrong side and the right side of the belting. The wrong side of the belting has this little seam that runs horizontally across and the right side of the belting is smooth. So wrong side, right side. And again, wrong side, right side. To sew the fabric to the belting, start by placing the fabric and the belting wrong sides together. Overlap them by 3 8 of an inch, then stitch the fabric to the belting using the same trick that I described for the modern belt. First. Line the belting against the 3 8 stitch line on the machine. Overlap the fabric so that the raw edge sits right smack in the middle of the presser foot. Move your needle to the right and sew. Now the next part is a little tricky and it's hard to show with this green fabric which basically looks the same on the right side and the wrong side. So I'm using a different fabric to show you how to work the next part. This technique of sewing the fabric to the belting and having the fabric encase the belting it's so amazing, my mind was blown when I figured it out. So over here I have the wrong side of the fabric stitched to the wrong side of the belting and on the right here is the pointed end of the belting. Are you ready? Let's go! First, fold and press the wrong side of the fabric to the right side of the belting. Next, fold and press the right sides of the fabric together making sure that the folded edge line up with the edge of the belting. We're starting to have a folded piece that is looking a little bit like an accordion. After that, fold the seam allowance down towards the wrong side of the fabric. And again, making sure that this folded edge lines up with the edge of the belting material. And now with the fabric folded like an accordion, sew the fabric along the pointed outline of the belting. Make sure that you backstitch at the start and end of the stitching so the stitches don't unravel. Next, trim the excess fabric to about 1 8 of an inch from the stitches and then slowly and carefully turn the right side of the fabric out. At this stage, you should have the pointed tip of the belting beautifully encased in fabric and just one long edge of the fabric that needs to be sewn together. For this step, you can either sew the fabric to the belting by stitching all around the edge like for the modern belt or hand sew it shut for a different polished look. For this vintage belt, I chose to hand sew the seams shut. Next, make the self-cover buckle. 
Now, because this kit is from the 1960s, the adhesive has all dried up, which is unsurprising. I worked around this issue by tracing and cutting the template out with interfacing and then applying the interfacing to my green fabric and after that used a super glue to make the template stick to the buckle. Surprisingly, I found these fabric clips pretty useful in this process of trying to hold the tiny flaps of fabric in place while waiting for the glue to cure. By the time I was done clipping, folding, gluing the fabric around the buckle cover, the front of the buckle cover looks like this. You will continue to have some raw edge along the middle vertical bar of the buckle, which is not going to be an issue because the belting will go over that later. Next, attach the pin to the center of the vertical bar of the buckle. Make sure you have the pin resting on the outside of the buckle when you're done. I couldn't get it secured myself and had to ask my husband for help. That's good, right? That's good, I think. Okay, so this next part involves a little bit of brute force. Actually, a lot of brute force. It's kind of do or die. I have to push it in and make sure it fits. We're just going to have to do it. Looks so homemade. <laughs> well, I guess it didn't turn out too bad. Now we will move on to attaching the belt to the buckle. The belting is pretty stiff and I didn't want to be too hard on my machine. So I finished the raw straight edge of the belt by hand. Since I cut the belting end of the fabric in the correct length this time, I punched a hole one inch from the straight edge of the belt, then dabbed some glue on it to prevent fraying. And then I looped the hole over the belt buckle and the pin, just like I did with the modern belt. Finally, insert the eyelets into the body of the belt. Start by making the first eyelet that is just the length of your waist circumference from the edge of the belt buckle, just like we did for the modern belt. Now, instead of embroidering the eyelets, I used the metal eyelet prongs that came with the belt kit. Unfortunately, I don't have proper eyelet setting pliers and I didn't want to go out to buy one just for this. So this is what I did instead. I started by using a little hammer and a screwdriver head to make the back metal prong spread out. And once the metal prong started spreading out a little, I used a nail with the rounded head to flatten the prong more. And once it was close to being flat all the way, I finished the job with just a hammer. The key really is to hit really gently each time so that the prong wouldn't just be, I don't know, not a nice flat shape. Seriously, I never knew making belts with the vintage belt kit would require so much elbow grease and just, you know, like all the little hardware tools that I never thought I would need and probably wouldn't have if not for Steven. And there, the belt is done. So I hope you've enjoyed the video for today. If you haven't already, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more sewing, DIY, and a little bit of fun. I will see you in the next video. Bye!